What's happening, Gromies? It's your boy Tev, and welcome to Best Buds. I want to thank you guys so much. You've gotten me past 200 subscribers and 420 Instagram followers. Without you guys, this channel and brand would be nothing. You could say, without you guys, I wouldn't have any Best Buds. So this week, 5 and 6 garden update of the Veg Tent is going to be relatively quick. I haven't been feeling that great this past week, so I didn't really get time to shoot everything I wanted to. But let's see how it's been growing. Week 5 was nothing hectic, besides the way I was feeling, but I'm fucking back at it. And so are the ladies. The last Blackberry Autoflower from 420 Fast Buds has also started shooting pistols, so all the autoflowers I transplanted flip to flower. So I'd say it's pretty solid proof and shows that autoflowers should just be planted in their final pots. Okay, so since all the autoflowers have flipped to flower, I have planted another two, and they both sprouted after just four days. Now, with these two new autoflowers, I've done some experimenting. What I noticed about the soil from Eden is that when I water the plants, the water flows straight through the medium. Not to say that it isn't holding moisture, but it's allowing for tunnels to form in the medium and drain the water much faster. So, with the one autoflower, I've filled it up halfway with Freedom Farms cocoa, and the rest is the soil from Eden using the cocoa as a moisture and drainage layer. So, let's compare as they grow. All the other ladies are kicking ass. Training on all the photos has begun and I'm just waiting for this bubba's gift to catch up with some height. And I'll start training her too. But look at the ladies go. And talk about watching them go, look at this blackberry number one, she is gunning it into flower. And strangely enough, making the whole tent smell like berries already. It has come to the end of week 5 and I'm going to transplant again. But this time, I'm going to transplant into freedom pots. They're dope ass 10 litre velcro pots. I love these things so much. Not only are they really high quality, but they have this velcro strap which allows you to open the pot, making transplanting to the next size a breeze. You guys should totally check these things out. But yeah, anyway, transplanting time again. I started with the Gorilla Skittles and Jack 47. Now, I'm sorry for the noisy footage, I'm working on getting to know this camera and I'm still extremely newbie. But anyway, I grab that magical ingredient again, mycorrhiza. Grab a pinch and sprinkle it into the molds I made. Carefully releasing the root ball from the pots and I drop those ladies into their new home, trying to be as careful as possible. After the transplant, I had worked on my first organic tea. And round about this time is when I'll feed the ladies for the first time. So in order to make a tea, there's a few things you'll need. An air pump, air stones, a material bag of some sort that is tightly woven. This bag will have actual material in it and we don't want this in our water. We just want our water to kind of brew through the bag, pulling all the nutrition and microbes from whatever we put in the bag. I'm using some really amazing nutrients from my guys at Umia Nutrients and others from my guy at Nature's Nursery. So go check these guys out, the links are down in the description. Trust, you guys won't regret it. Now when making my tea, I'm using unsulfured blackstrap molasses. Umia's multi kelp concentrate, Umia's Calmag, and liquid compost from my guy at Nature's Nursery, and some really nice worm castings I got from Leroy Merlins. I'll take you guys through exactly how I make my tea in the next episode of season two. So you can see exactly how much of what I use and how long I let it brew for, and a few other tips. So stay tuned, stoners.
Now, when it comes to making teas this season, I'm keeping track of a whole lot more than I was in the last run. I bought this fucking awesome multi pen from my guys at Legal Grow, and this beautiful piece of technology will help me not only keep track of a more accurate pH level, but also the electrical conductivity of my solution and the total parts per million of nutrients or salts in my solution as a whole. And don't stress, all of this I'll go a bit more into detail with in the next season two garden update in about two weeks. But just so you guys know, their first feeding has an EC of 1.2 and a total parts per million of 615, which is perfect for the stage of life that they're in. We are now at the end of week six and there are a few things happening in the tent. The Blackberry 4 and 5 has some issues that I'm starting to see. Blackberry number 4 is yellowing quite a bit in the center and Blackberry number 5 has a mutating leaf. Also, the node spacing is crazy tight on these ladies. So what my brain is telling me is that they are looking for nitrogen and probably a few other trace elements. So say hello to Umia's kelp concentrate. I'm going to make a foliage spray with this stuff and just wow, it smells fucking crazy. Like goddamn straight up seaweed and I mean a lot of it. So I sprayed the ladies with the foliage spray and let's see how they come back. The four photo periods are kicking off. I've continued to train and add ties to keep these sneaky branches as low as possible. But otherwise they are killing it in the tent. Interestingly enough, I have had to start with some selective defoliation already. These fan leaves are getting huge and looking fucking healthy. So, I'm going to remove a few to let more light reach those lower branches. And they are growing quick fast. This LSD is leading the pack in this run. Her main stem has already reached the edge of the pot and is now being trained to go around the pot, as I will do with all the ladies. Let's have one look at all the ladies before this episode ends, and we can see how far they've progressed from the beginning of the episode. After the kelp spray, the color is coming back in the blackberry number four, and number five is back to growing by the look of it. They kind of seem to have stopped growing for a little, but they seem to be back on track. Other than that, the ladies are kicking it nice and tight. I'm already really impressed with the training done this season so far. And, I mean, they all look in so beautiful. And that's the end of the garden update. Please hit that subscribe button and like the video if you guys enjoyed the garden update. It really helps the channel and it keeps me really motivated to bring you guys better and better content. Next week is the garden update on the flower scent. And I'm pretty sure at least one of them will be harvested. So I hope to see you guys in next week's season one garden update. We are going to do some trichome checks, so I'll take you through exactly what I'm looking for to know whether or not my bud is done. Until next week, Romies, keep those heads up and those blunts burning. <laughs>